Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for casual conversations with local women in business. Uh, today, you're in for a treat as we get to hear from four uh, wonderful women in business in our community who are all currently serving on our board of directors. Um, so this is a fun group of women we get to hear from uh, today. We're going to walk through a little bit about them in case you don't know them very well they're each going to get the opportunity to introduce themselves and then we're going to talk about um, the pandemic um, how it's affected their business how they've had to be innovative through these crazy times we're going to move into talking about community um, and chamber and all things business so we're really excited that you guys have joined us here today thank you to our panelists for agreeing to take some time out of y'all's busy schedules to join us and we look forward to this morning. We are recording this, so if um, you know someone who wants to catch up with it later, we will post this on our YouTube channel and send out an email with the link um, to that as well. So you'll get to um, watch them over and over again as well. So um, we are gonna start this morning with introductions to of our panelists and I've told them that I'd like for them to, them to introduce themselves. It's just a little more personal than me reading um, a script. So I'm gonna, the first person I see on here is Miss Jeanette DeWitt who is currently serving as our board chair. Uh, so Jeanette, why don't you kick us off this morning? Good morning, everybody. I am Jeanette DeWitt. I am a Callaway County native. I graduated from Callaway County High, County High School in 1998. Uh, I did go away to college at Harding University in Searcy, Arkansas, and then was able to move back home after graduation. Uh, you've heard me several times on chamber videos and other things that I do, and I tell everybody I think Murray, Kentucky is the greatest place on earth. Uh, I've had the privilege of going a lot of places and traveling, and it's always great to come back home. Um, it's a privilege to serve the community in the capacity as being board chair this year. Um, there's no time like the present. Did not know that we were going to be in a pandemic. Uh, I am also the president of the Board of Realtors this year, and nothing like being a pandemic president for a board. Um, but that's just who I am. I do have a son who's getting ready to be 15 years old, and he's going to be a Callaway County alumni as well. Makes mama proud. Uh, my husband is the HR manager for Saputo Dairies here in Murray, and um, we just we love where we're at and we're very thankful to be here and be a part of it, so. Great, LaCosta, would you introduce yourself? Absolutely, good morning. Uh, my name is LaCosta Hayes and similar to Jeanette, I am from Murray and Callaway County. Um, graduated Murray High School, attended Murray State University and found that this is a great place to, to live, to work, to play, to raise my family. Um, and we really enjoy all things community. Um, several of my community experiences here in town have all kind of surrounded um, on all things with fundraising out in the community, learning more about um, businesses and helping people. And that's the reason that I stay here in Murray and Callaway County. Um, my husband, Chris, also works here locally. And this year I have a high school freshman um, at Murray High School. Uh, this semester she has chosen during the pandemic to be a virtual learner. And I just, I'm so happy that our school systems here in Murray and Callaway are so willing to work with parents. Everything's on a very personal level. Um, so that part is, is truly a blessing. Um, currently, I'm the Client and Community Relations Coordinator at McConnell Insurance, and I deal with a lot of different people in a lot of different counties, and I have to say that of all of those, Callaway County is my favorite. Um, I'm a past board chair for the chamber, still serving on the board, and I get to work with all of these lovely ladies um, in lots of different fun capacities, and I'm happy to participate in the panel today. Thank you, LaCosta. I see Trey next on my screen, so <laughs> take it away, Trey. <laughs> Hi, good morning. My name is Trey Lou, founder and CEO of Trey Lou Designs in Murray, Kentucky. Um, I'm very fortunate. I was born and raised in China, came into the U.S. to study when I was 16 years old. Um, in 1999, I came to Murray, went to Murray State, graduated with an international business degree, 
from my state in 2003. Um, after that, I stayed in Murray. Um, in 2015, I founded Trailu Designs. We specialize in design, manufacture, and import wholesale home decor to all your mass retailers. Um, our customers are TJ Maxx, at home stores, Burlington, Ross, all those places like majority of us shop in, right? Um, Murray has been very, very close to my heart. Um, I lived in China for 16 years. I have lived in Murray um, 21 years now. So <laughs> I've lived in Murray, that my actual home country. So um, the biggest reason I started my business in Murray instead of anywhere else is because of the support my family and friends and the community has to offer here. Um, I would say if anyone else was going to start something, um, I would have definitely recommended them to start in Murray Calloway County because the support you get from the local um, people and the community and the chamber has been tremendously for us, for our growth. So, and I'm glad to be serving on the board <laughs> this year and last year and next year so we can contribute in the overgrowth of our community. Thank you, Trey. Katrina, uh, love to hear from you. Good morning, I'm Katrina Kofelt. Um, I am not a native of Murray, Kentucky. Actually, I, I think that's one of the cool parts of hearing some of you. Um, like Trey, I came from other places. So I was born and raised in Minocqua, Wisconsin. It's a little tourist town. Um, up in the very northern part of the state. And then I got my, um, I met my husband while I was in high school. So we are high school sweethearts. And then we, um, I went to college in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I got my bachelor's in psychology. And then because I'm just a traveler at heart, um, I moved out to Colorado. I got my master's at the University of Denver. And I thought that's where I was going to live the rest of my life. Um, and then, um, but as it would have it, um, my husband tricked me and decided to tell me that Kentucky was a lot like Wisconsin and we could drive home to visit family. Um, and so I figured I could do what I do um, as a counselor anywhere in the country for at least a year. And so I moved here to Murray, Kentucky in 2008. And I've been here ever since. And honestly, it feels like home. Like I've, I feel like I've been here for most of my life. Um, my husband also owns a business, so we're both business owners, um, but I currently am the owner of Bridges Family Center. I started that nine and a half years ago, which is crazy to me to realize that I've been doing it that long, um, but I love Murray. I think like Trey said, um, just to feel embraced as an outsider, even kind of moving in, um, I felt the support pretty immediately. Um, I feel like different business owners were gracious to me and helped me as I got started and were quick to lend a advice or an ear. And I think um, we're just really warm. Um, and so for me, I wouldn't want to do business anywhere or else. And I apologize, I have a head cold. So you're going to hear a little bit of um, drainage on me today. So, <laughs> but that's who I am. So I should say I'm a licensed professional counselor as well. Great, so as you can see, we have a very diverse uh, group here today, all representing you know, real estate and um, counseling. We've got business owners. It's just really exciting to see um, a unique group on our board serving to bring in different perspectives. Um, and so thank you all for sharing a little bit about yourselves this morning. As we all know, the pandemic has caused a lot of um, issues in our local economy with business um, and has really affected every part of our lives in some way or another. Um, and I know that as a board, we've talked about it's affected us at the chamber, um, you know, certainly as we've seen businesses, you know, close or unable to, you know, renew their membership you know, choosing a dues versus paying, you know, an employee or something, you know, those are hard decisions that businesses are having to make. And, and we still want to be supportive. Um, and we know that in y'all's uh, industries, you've experienced hardships as well. So how do you feel like in your industry, you have, or your business, really, you have turned, you know, it into opportunities, maybe had to innovate or change. So, um, 
I just maybe share briefly any advice that you would give other businesses, but just how you've adapted and how you've had to innovate. Um, and I thought we might start with Trey because I know, you know, she's had um, some really cool things to share. So I thought you might kick us off, Trey. <laughs> right. Well, thank you. So 2020 is definitely being probably the toughest year for our business and for our team. Um, actually, our craziness started in January when the pandemic was hitting overseas. That's part of our, where our manufacturer and design team and all that starts. So in January, all of our current, we were having a great 2019. So 2020, we set all kinds of ambitious goals that we were going to reach as a business, as a team. Then January hit, production stops 100%. Um, all of the orders that we booked, we couldn't ship. Then in February, um, overseas um, situation got a little bit under control. Production starting backing up. <laughs> so our orders are piling up now. And then third week of March, I would say that majority of our customer store has to be closed because all of those are brick and mortar stores. So our, or, our business total revenue from where we were in 2019, great, to zero. So that was a quick stop and quick wake-up call. I would say for the first two weeks, um, as a leader of the company, I was literally living in fear. <laughs> I'm not going to lie about that. It was not like something I go, oh, I got it total under control. I had zero control. Like, I didn't know what were we going to do. Um, but one thing we did was I was being very transparent with my team and let them know how um, I had no idea what we're going to do, <laughs> but we're going to be able to do it together. Um, so our team come together and analyzed our business and figure out the things that we couldn't do before which is as a business owner, I would say there is, you hear this all the time, that spend time on your business, not in your business. To spend time on the strategic part of it, not just the operational part of it. But we all know as small business owners or any kind of organization you're in, it's very easy to focus on the operational part of it, the day-to-day -day part. Um, so COVID actually gave us the opportunity to stop doing the operational, but to focus on the strategic, which is the things that we have said um, two, three years ago that we see our business should have done. So we took that time, two, two things that we did was to diversify the platform we sell our product or channels. The next thing was to diversify our product. So in those three months shut down for our business, our business actually launched um, a brand new e-commerce store on Amazon with four brand new lifestyle and beauty and wellness product. Um, so I was very, very much proud of our team going from home decor, jumping into wellness um, and beauty products. Um, that's the thing that our company did. I can't take any credit for that. I have to give all the praises to my team and how willing they are to take the challenge and sell through this whole 2020 craziness and all of that. So we're very, very fortunate. It's pretty incredible, Trey, to think that you innovated created new products all within just a few months. I mean, it takes years sometimes for a business to create products. So um, just a really neat story um, about how you and your team innovated and like you said, diversified your product um, and took some time to kind of backstep and figure out big picture. How are we gonna make it through? Um, so really appreciate you sharing that with us um, today. Mm -hmm. Trina, I'll skip on over to you. I know. Obviously, um, you play a role in, the, in somewhat of, uh, I guess you could say, healthcare, which yes. has um, definitely been affected. So, share with us about your company. 
Yeah, so as a service, you know, we're a service business, um, but also we're a mental health agency. So we were, we were part of the essential businesses. So we never had to close down, but obviously the way that we were going to provide our service had to change significantly. Um, and truthfully, had this happened six months prior to when it did, I don't know that we would have been able to do what we were able to, but um, similar to Trey, I think as things started to kind of vamp up in January, we had made a pretty crucial decision that we were gonna move all of our client data onto an electronic um, record system, which had we not done that, we would not have had access to things and had that mobility. Um, so I, I feel like that was a, a pretty incredible decision and the timing of that is not lost on me um, that happened in January so that in March when things sort of exploded and we were having to sort of shut down lobbies or distribute my team or not have people around we had that mobility um, but one of the big things that we had to do was really transition into doing more telehealth platforms um, which is it sounds so simple because we're all doing it now but when you first started doing that it's hard. I mean, it's hard to make sure you've got all your stuff set up. It's hard to make sure that people understand how to use those platforms, communicating with clients at large. I mean, we have some 750 active clients right now, making sure that they were okay, making sure that their mental health was okay. And part of the industry that people don't talk a lot about is obviously our money, the majority of it comes from health insurance companies. Well, they're in overspend at this current time because obviously people are seeking services, but what people don't understand is as a small business, we don't get paid immediately by an insurance company. So our payments go 30, 60, 90 days. And so companies that were typically paying us at the 30 day rate, we're now gonna start paying at 90. So when it first initially started, I knew we would be fine, but I was really concerned about the two months later um, and how that was gonna roll. And so we had to work really hard at making sure that we were connecting with our clients, that clients knew that we were there, that we were still providing the same quality over telehealth, which to be honest is really difficult to do. Most people feel much more connected when you're in a private room. Um, so there was a lot of pieces from the business side to just client care. Um, and people were scared. I mean, people were generally scared. I was scared. Um, I was scared for my staff and my, how was I going to protect my employees? How was I going to protect the clients coming in the building? How do I adhere to regulations that I, I want to be supportive of, but still run a business? I think just as an owner, like many people, that's, those are a lot of big decisions. And to be perfectly honest, I was doing that while in labor. So I got to have a baby at the exact moment when we decided to shut down. Um, so there was a lot of just teamwork. And I think like Trey, I think you end up really relying on those people in your team to step up. And there are definitely members of my team who really took charge and helped out and were helping get the word out. And um, I think, you know, just to the community as people were processing, this is the normal and this is the anxiety we're feeling. There's a lot that goes into that. There's a lot of families that were at risk and we had to do a lot of extra to reach out and get creative on how we did that. Um, for sure. But I think a little bit like Trey, as, as clients sort of slowed down in the, in the initial process, um, because when we're fearful, we tend to sort of shut down before we reach out for help. Um, we use that time, similar to her, to sort of launch things that we had talked about years ago. So some things like we've been writing, we've been writing wellness journals and podcasts for two years. And I think we finally were able to put pen to paper and we're going to launch that in 2021. Um, you know, and I think there's a number of other opportunities that we've been able to seek out that I'm excited about for the coming year, but we had to slow down probably enough to ever make that happen. So you got to turn those negatives into as many positives as you can for sure. And, and, you know, hang in there. Thank you, Katrina. I'm sitting here looking at Lacosta and those really fun red glasses. Um, <laughs> eager to hear <laughs> um, how you guys have taken this time and had to turn, you know, some of these negatives into opportunities. So um, share with sure. us what's been going on with you. Yeah, sure. So um, our office, we remained open the entire time um, when the pandemic began. Um, however, we all worked remotely. Um, which was a challenge to get, get set up and get accustomed to how things work that way. Um, but I can tell you that during that time, I felt a real sense of appreciation from our clients. Um, we worked with them on claims and um, just kind of troubleshooting if they needed something or had a question. And 
one of the one of the challenges we had we pride ourselves on meeting with clients one on one that if you have a claim or a concern that like Katrina you can sit down and you can be in the room with someone and really really talk to them and express you know what your issues are or, or what you need to do um, and we were unable to do that for enrollments and different things and we're still struggling with that because a lot of our clients are school districts and they're trying to keep their kids safe and you know they don't want outside people you know coming in so um, we've kind of worked out some different plans on that end maybe on their NTI days um, and I think that in in our business we continue to encourage alternate ways to meet with our clients and for me, I have learned a lot of patience and to be really humble. Um, not everybody is, is technic, technic and um, IT and um, all of that sort of thing. But I have, I have found that I have filed several claims for people who have been diagnosed with COVID. And taking the time to actually talk with them and go over how they're feeling, how they're progressing, um, it really, I've gotten more compliments during this pandemic than on a regular day-to-day -day basis, that we're just taking time with people and offering a Zoom meeting, offering a WebEx, um, offering just phone calls. Uh, they can pull up out front and call and we can take paperwork out to them. Just so much appreciation and all of that really stems from this community because that's who we are. Um, that we're always willing to reach out and, and go the extra mile. We've utilized the help from the chamber with the signage um, that was put out in the very beginning, which was wonderful. You know, when you're just kind of running around like, what do we do? We, we, need, to, we need to let everyone know the same thing, the same message across the board. And the chamber really stepped in for us. And um, we were glad that that was offered uh, to all of the chamber members and beyond um, on signage and and different things like that. So really, um, we've just done the best we could. And like I said, lots of patience and learn to be really humble and um, try to accommodate all of our clients as best as we could in our relationships. Thank you, LaCosta. And it's been interesting to hear just so far the common thread of, you know, this, this pandemic has caused us all to have to slow down a little bit. and. You know, before my calendar would be packed and, you know, sometimes we think busy is important, but, you know, maybe sometimes we weren't as productive. Um, right. But we've taken the time and invested it wisely into having to maybe pivot into other things. So I'm going to throw it now and pivot to Jeanette. Um, obviously, real estate has been interesting during this pandemic. So share with us um, what's been going on there. So my part of the story is going to be different than the other ones that you heard from. Um, when all of this first started out, you know, you're sitting here going, how are people going to buy houses? How are they going to sell? So on and so forth. And that first couple of weeks that we were in March from when the schools let out until everybody was trying to figure out what's your new normal, you know, it, now Jody never missed a day of work because they were essential and he was always at the plant going in. We as real estate agents were essential workers and we never had to miss anything. The problem is the way that we work, we had to figure out how the other offices were working because people who were able to go into the courthouse and pull the deeds and get everything ready and to make sure that all the title searches and stuff were done when all of the government workers and stuff were not allowed back in there, you're having to look at new ways of doing things. Um, so I'm going to give two shouts out really quick to our PBA office and also to the Callaway County clerk's office. They worked hand in hand with us to make sure that we could get copies of the deeds and the PBA records and stuff because they were having to split schedules as well when people were going back in because if you have an office of like five people or 10 people or 14 people, and when you have a pandemic of something that you really don't know how to deal with, they were having to split shifts and do things, you know, differently so that in case one person got it, they weren't all quarantined at one time. Um, and we, our board now has 94 agents 
as a part of it. So if you have 94 people calling up there and asking for deeds or copies of something and you're only half staff, that's difficult. Um, the other thing is, you know, the banks are sitting there wondering what's going to happen as well. And they're having to not allow, the, you know, their customers to come in and so on and so forth. And so, you know, loan applications and stuff can be done online and through email and everything. But the attorneys were trying to figure out, can they use electronic signatures, you know, because deeds always needed wet ink on them for signing. And so we were essentially going and doing like <laughs> drive by closings, <laughs> like, you know, one set would pull in, the attorneys would bring stuff out and they're gloved up and everybody gets to keep their pins and everything. And so you get innovative and do things that you never have done before. And LaCosta, you were laughing and talking about you're not a technology person. Well, you have a lot of this in real estate that was not ever really built on technology the way that you do deeds and record deeds and, and file stuff, especially here, maybe in other parts of you know Kentucky and across the states. But we were still you know going in and pulling stuff and doing things like that. Well, there's another big key part of that, and that's listing and showing properties. Um, when you're not supposed to be around a ton of people, you get creative. So we did more Facebook Live and more Skype and more, you know, FaceTiming of going in and showing properties because number one, the people who were living there didn't want a ton of people coming in and out because once again, we have this COVID-19 going around that people really don't understand. And here we are, it's hard to believe in November and I'm not sure that we still understand it exactly. Um, and so you're doing things differently. The thing that was most difficult and heartbreaking at times was you had people that were possibly under contract and was really, really close to closing that may have been laid off. Letting get to the closing table, deals fell apart. And so those were the, the ones that were really, really difficult because it, most people don't understand it's typically a domino effect. If you've got one house under contract, then you probably have another house under contract. And it may not just be here in Callaway County or Marshall County or Graves County. It could have been people that were transferring for jobs that those jobs are no longer there. Mm -hmm. um, and so in real estate, we saw just a whole like, you know, dynamic of things that were going on. So you're sitting there and in our office meetings that we were doing is Zoom. You know, and which was odd for all of us because we were used to at my office at Copperhead, 9, 9.30 on Monday mornings, we're all in a conference room together seeing each other and talking about stuff to where there for a little bit we didn't even do the Zoom meetings because everybody was trying to figure out what was going on. And then you go into this Zoom meeting and you're having to learn that this is how you're going to communicate. And once again, here we are at almost November and this is what we're still doing. Um, but it's almost like, oh, this is our new normal. This is what you do now. But going in for those first couple of weeks, you weren't sure what real estate was going to look like. Well, you call any banker, you call any loan officer that's out there, you call any closing attorney and title company. Folks, real estate went nuts. Um, interest rates went down. Uh, People found jobs that had never been able to, you know, work as many hours as they normally could at essential jobs. And when you have interest rates that were dipping lower, now our problem is not just in Callaway County, but across the state and across the country is we don't have enough inventory. I mean, houses, if you look right now, yesterday, because I knew we were going to be on here, I pulled how many houses they're listed in Callaway County. There's 75. Okay. And that ranges from like 50,000 up to 1.9 million. Okay. There are 56 houses currently under contract or pending to close between now and the end of the year. Uh, and it's that way everywhere. Uh, I have friends in Lexington and Louisville and Northern Kentucky and Eastern Kentucky, and it's that way all over. So real estate has really done, you know, kind of one of those things before you're going, we had no idea that we were going to be this busy. NAR is saying that as long as interest rates are going to stay like this and we have the essential workers and stuff that's going on, that it's going to stay like this for a while. Um, so we just had to find new ways and be creative of how to show houses and list houses 
and be very careful when we went in, always wear your mask, have gloves available, have the foot coverings, you know, don't let the clients touch the doorknobs or the knobs in the house. Don't be pulling drawers and everything. Or if they do make sure you wipe them down. So, you know, there's a, there's a whole new way of doing things. Um, and it's just like LaCosta and Trey and Katrina said, you, you just start getting innovative with what you're doing because if you're going to stay ahead of the curve in your industry, you have to. Um, I will say that Trey came and we were at the park, everybody, we were socially distanced and we were eating and Trey had this water bottle and it had this little light that would pop on and it had her logo on it. And I'm like, Trey, what on earth do you have? I'm so intrigued by it. And she's like, it's our new product. And you're going, life gives you a lemon, you make lemonade. And if you put it in Trey's new container, it'll make sure that it's sanitized before it comes out. So, um, I mean, and so that's what you do. But I think one of the other things that I found, um, 2020 has taught me a lot. Uh, in a lot of different ways, not just professionally, but one of the things that I, I really did appreciate is when you were seeing people that were home, you got to see people doing home projects and stuff that they have put off for five and 10 years. Uh, you did get to see some companies that have been waiting to paint the outside or to put a new sign up or to do some of those things. And so I try not to focus all on the negative that COVID has done. Uh, I'm thankful for some downtime. I'm thankful for some time that you can actually sit and take a breather and get some of those projects done that you maybe would not have. Um, I know that everybody was doing the quarantine clean out of their homes. Uh, I did not realize that we had so much junk here after only living here for four years from building. I thought I had like got rid of a ton of stuff, but uh, got rid of a lot more. And I think that you try to find the positive in everything that comes and is thrown at you. And so I'm thankful for technology in some realms so that you can stay in touch with everybody. Uh, had some wonderful group texts going on, uh, some great Zoom times with girls on Friday nights or Thursday nights or Tuesday nights because I would honestly get up and not know what day it was because it was just like it's the day after the day and you didn't really know what time things were and I thought that was interesting. But as far as my industry, uh, we had a totally different thing than what you're seeing some of these others because real estate just went off the charts. Uh, and I'm very grateful for that because you may look at us in five years and we may be kind of stagnant and not, not doing anything. Uh, so you, you just are thankful for the times that are going really, really well. And you look at Trey and be like, that's awesome that you could totally do a totally different thing. Uh, and, and open up some new avenues that you never had before. And Katrina, I've always said, I'm very grateful that your company is here. Uh, I think that if there's anything that the community always needed here, we, we needed a good counseling center. And I can't think of a better time to have that in our community for when things like this are going on because no, nobody knew what a pandemic felt like. Um, and it can be scary for a lot of different reasons. So very grateful that we have that resource here. Yeah, I think vulnerability is a huge part of what's come out of the pandemic, right? I think we always, we operate in safe bubbles. And I think we, especially in Northern Kentucky, we have this incredible community. I think most of us would say we feel really safe and, and, and that, you know, things, I mean, definitely things happen here, but I think in a lot of ways we feel really sheltered. And I think something that's happened out of the pandemic is it makes you feel really vulnerable to the world and, and the fact that we're, we are at risk, you know, just like anywhere else. And I think figuring out how do we survive that? Who do we reach out to for help? How do we manage if we've had mental health symptoms or for a lot of people who'd never experienced a lot of mental health suddenly were experiencing those symptoms and knowing what to do with that. I think one other thing that you brought up that I hadn't forgotten was, you know, when family court shut down, one part of my job, I do a lot of a lot of work with children and families who are in the process of divorce or maybe custody issues. Well, a lot of those people depend on the court to make decisions about visitations and things. And so, as we know, when we're in the middle of divorces, we're probably not always our best selves. And those kids, when the court shut down, those parents didn't have that judge to run to to mitigate that anymore. Um, and so for a lot of those kids and those families, they were in a lot of flux about well, are they going to go? Should they go? Some One parent's scared, one parent that thinks it's a hoax. And I think just the philosophies and helping people feel validated in their thoughts 
helping, you know, families work together who typically maybe wouldn't be working well together. Try, I mean, we kind of became that that person in the middle for a lot of those families, but I think a lot of families needed those support systems anyway. So, I mean, there's been a lot of, a lot of impact on families. And I think interesting, like some families really flourished with all the extra family time together, right? I heard all these wonderful adventures and cool at home things they were doing. And, and I think awesome. But then there were the families who, you know, you start to realize like, that's a lot of hours with one person in a, in a time frame where for all of my mamas and daddies who are doing these kids at home doing school, they're realizing I don't really want to be my kid's teacher and that's an awful job. Um, and so I think, you know, there's a lot of people who've been doing a lot of hats and putting a lot of hats on and, and it's exhausting. And I think sometimes if there's anything we can talk about is self-care and making sure you're finding moments to take care of yourself in this process, whether you're the business owner, whether you're an employee, whether you're a manager, whether you're, whether you're just a mom, you know, at home or a dad at home or the laid off. I mean, there's just, you got to take care of yourself. You have to find moments and it isn't just about switching perspectives, but I think just truly digging in and taking care of yourself, honoring yourself in that time, honoring the feelings, validating the things that you're going through wherever that is. And, and I think making sure you have that time, because that's been a huge part of how anyone's really survived this as a, at large. So. Katrina, you brought up a, another sector that I want to say something about real quick. I could never express my thankfulness to the, our school systems um, for what they did when March happened and they found out, Hey, you're going to be closing after Friday get all your stuff together. We're going to have to figure out what to do um, between the teachers, the boards of education, but especially those lunchroom workers that continue to go in to get food out to those kids um, from March to May and then through the summer and continuing on. I just, I can't thank them enough because there are many in this community that rely on those meals. Um, and so even now, uh, La Costa is, she's got her daughter that is doing the distance learning. My son is going back to in-person and we have the educators that are trying to keep up with all the different platforms. And so I just want to say thank you for what they do in this community. Um, thankful for Murray State and what they've done, but we are a very fortunate community, uh, for the educators that we have and for the school systems that we have here. But, uh, I, for one, uh, will reiterate what Katrina said. I was very grateful that I had an eighth grader that could fully function at a computer and get his stuff done. Uh, and I said that when May came along, I retired as a teacher. Uh, Stella was not opening up a new high school over here for freshman year. So I'm thankful he, he was able to go back. But I cannot imagine the parents that were trying to be the essential workers and going in every day and then having especially elementary school age kids that you're trying to get all that done. And especially the March to May sessions that we were in because all of our educators were just thrown into this thing. It's like, we've got to do this online stuff or pick up these packets. So um, big shout out to our educators out there. And I know that they're still doing everything that they can for our kids. And I know all of us mamas on here, we're very grateful for everything that they do, uh, but especially the food program that they have to still get out to those kids um, that are distance learners and stuff. Very, that's one of the reasons I'm very grateful for the community that we're in. Uh, we have just great volunteers as well. I don't know if you can see on the screen me getting red hives thinking back to March through May. <laughs> <laughs> Home schooling, working from home day to day, gray. Um, that color change. Remember when we couldn't get our hair done? I mean, it seems like forever ago. And a um, very stressful time for working women. You know, there's been so many things released on the effect the pandemic has had on women in business across the country. Um, just devastating and we probably won't talk about that today but um it can be very discouraging for us but you know 2020 you know you guys have sort of talked about the positives in your industry but gosh how much negative has there been it's like so much negative and uh you know we talked you know the briggs closure last year the pandemic hit 
you know, all the unemployment we've seen, uh, I forget the numbers, they're just staggering at one point about how many people in Callaway County were on unemployment, businesses having to shut down, uh, a, a horrible, uh, I don't want to say horrible, but a tough national election going on right now. And just all the claws are out. You see that everywhere you go. Um, it's a lot uh, for anybody in any community to really go through. Um, and so, and so many other issues, you know, that we could talk about, but you know, we've all chosen to live and work in our community uh, for a reason. And, you know, I think if we step back and think about all the positives that there are in our community, you know, we can have a really large list. And so as we transition sort of out of your industry and what you've adapted to, maybe talk a little bit about our community. And um, if there was one thing you could change about it, yes, there are things we definitely need to grow in undoubtedly maybe some name some of those things that you think we could work on as a community um, and how we might go about with that change so uh, Lacoste I'm looking at you maybe you can kick us off on this one okay um, I'll be glad to <clears throat> excuse me so one of the things that I have found um, relating to that is instead of assuming what a business does or what their role is, find out. Do a little research before assuming that a certain business or nonprofit isn't doing something to help the community just because. Maybe it's beyond their scope of their boundaries. Maybe there's more to the story. And Michelle, I feel like you can relate with this, especially during the pandemic at the chamber that Probably sometimes a lot of things that happen, people think, well, why isn't the chamber doing that? Well, why is the chamber not picking up on that? And it might be not because the chamber doesn't care or because the chamber is not thinking about it, but it might be because that's, that's not your area. That's, that's someone else's role. That's someone else's scope. And your boundary stops, you know, at a certain point. Um, so... I think it's important for us to, you know, just instead of us assuming that things are one way, let's, let's find out and, and really, you know, dig a little deeper as to, well, do you offer this service or can you help me find someone who can? Um, and I think that in this community, um, one of the points I would love to see is for us to continue to advocate for programs for our community. And that's anything that's going on, anything that's going on downtown, on campus, in our school systems, um, at the, our, our library, any kind of program that's going on. Let's, let's, let's be that social media. Let's share it. Let's, let's advocate for that. All things community. Now is the time that we all need to be on the same page, helping one another, offering valuable resources. Now's the time to advocate have, have that humble attitude, that servant attitude, and, you know, to help others. There may be something that I know, oh, you didn't know this service was offered? This is, this is a great platform for that. And I feel like, you know, you don't know until you ask. So just to kind of put those things out there. I think that's, that's super important right now when everything seems to be so negative and down, you know, to maybe find some things to, to lift others up. Lots of virtual opportunities out there. I know Murray State's done a great job with some of their events. Murray Main Street has had a recent really great event. Um, so lots of different avenues that are out there. We just need to seek those out and share them. Great thoughts, LaCosta. I'm going to pass it to Trey. What are your thoughts? If, if there was something you felt like our community could change in, uh, what would it be? Actually, my thought aligns with what LaCosta was saying, is the awareness of what different organizations and business has to offer in Murray, right? Um, especially for me, I would say a lot of the nonprofit. Uh, we all know who they are or what we have around, but for our companies, we're trying to get involved in some of those things. But unless our passion aligns, I really don't know what other organization um, their purpose are for. 
I think. And like what Lacoste is saying too, the same thing was the chamber. And I think we all talked about doing our board meetings is what can we do to help the business in this community? What are some of the things we can do within our boundaries that we said that we could do? But what are some of the things we like to do, but it's really maybe overstepping some other organization we like to do, but we can't do, but we can't post on our social media and say, well, here are the things we couldn't do for you, we would have liked to do. <laughs> um, you know, we have, like we talk about, we hear um, our members in chamber come to us and say, hey, could you do this for us? Can you do this for us? And it's so hard for us at times to say, we, it's just not within our limits. That's something we can do. And I think that goes forward to all the other organizations within Murray Calloway too. You know, if there is some kind of platform that brings people to the awareness of what each of those organizations are for, um, then businesses and individuals and organizations can go to those places to align their passion and serve a purpose or align their needs to get it fulfilled. So I agree with Acosta on that. And that's something I was thinking of. So Jeanette, wanna share your thoughts with us? Ditto, how's that? Double, double ditto. Um, I think that people look and assume sometimes what your role is and assumptions get you in a lot of trouble for a lot of different reasons. Um, you know, people thought that we had control on when we could open things back up in Callaway County. Never give Jeanette DeWitt that kind of control. <laughs> um, but we didn't, you know, you can voice things and what I'm going to be an advocate for from here on out, and I've always been, but I'll say this on a public platform, if you want change, figure out who you need to talk to to make change happen. If you're gonna sit in your living room and complain about it, it's not gonna change. Uh, either reach out to your local officials if it's locally something that you want to change, if it's something regionally, reach out to those people regionally. And if it's state level, then reach out to the local, regional and state level people to get the change. Um, you can email Michelle and Haley and myself. And if I could cut the ribbons to make things open wide up, we would. Um, there's nothing that I know that any of us that's on this call would not do for a community member that you thought was going to struggle or go under if we had the capabilities of doing it. Um, I don't want ever want to see anybody fail. That's not who I am. You know, I laugh and tell everybody if you're in my, in my business, the other 93 people that are on my association here locally, they're in theory my competitors that's just what salespeople are but they will also tell you that i'm also going to be their biggest cheerleader because there's plenty for everybody and that's just the truth and if i'm working with anybody i want to get to the closing table i don't want to cause roadblocks to get there but i also have to know what everybody else is capable of and michelle one of the things that i would love to see callaway county in general be better at. We need internet services for places that are not close to the city. Uh, I think that we have really seen that come up right now, especially when we have distance learners that are out. And I'm going to applaud some companies that have made their Wi-Fi available. I'm going to applaud offices that have made sure that they have run hot spots to where people could pull up and use those parking lots. I have seen farmers say, if you will come up, here's our hot spot. We will print off your items if you will come in and ask for them or call us and we'll bring them to you. That's why Murray and Callaway County is the greatest community that you will ever find. Um, plenty of negatives, but if there's one thing that I wish that we could rally for, especially when you have workers that are working from home, but those school age children to be able to get what they need to get. If they do not have somebody that can take them to those hotspots, 
I believe that, you know, people are going to go, really internet? That's, but really we need the rural communities to have that access. And I think that during a pandemic, we really, really see that. So that's something that I hope us as a community, we can work on and figure out how to make that happen. Um, but I just wish people before that were so quick to say something really understands what your focus is and what your capabilities are um, before you make that quick, that quick assumption. Um, anybody that follows me on Facebook, you can go read what my quote of the day is. Michelle and the people in the boardroom know I refuse to follow any negativity. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to spew it out there. I have only started putting positive quotes up since about June. I will put up something positive. I will put up something encouraging. But today's quote, just to give you a little bit, if we talk to plants nicely and watch them grow and thrive, maybe you should do that to a human being is what it essentially says. There's enough, there's enough negativity. There's enough harsh things said. Be somebody that says the kind thing today. Um, but before you jump on somebody's back or a company, um, maybe see what their actual capabilities are before you do that. I'm actually surprised by y'all's discussing, to, to be honest. Um, so I'm really, I'm excited to hear, you know, your thoughts and you're all agreeing on that. And even thinking through how the chamber can play a role in helping connect people maybe to those opportunities um, to get more engaged, how we can play a part in the communication piece, helping people know what's going on and encouraging them. Uh, to get involved and then obviously well not obviously I mean you know because you're on our board we're fixing to launch a love local campaign encouraging people to put their money where their heart is you chose to live here and work here for a reason and don't don't forget the reasons why you love this community and and be a good neighbor support your neighbor now more than ever and so we're really excited to launch that um, it kind of goes along I feel like with what you know you three have said so far um, about change in our community just trying to focus on the positive things versus the negative, but know that there are still things we need to work on. Um, you know, like Jeanette said, broadband is a huge infrastructure issue for our community and how can we work on that? But uh, Jen, or sorry, Katrina, I'm going to pass it to you now. You know, what is maybe something from your perspective you feel like our community could grow in? I mean, I think one of the things I kept thinking was remembering who we are. Um, I think as a community, when pandemics happen and we're kind of isolating or we're doing all the crazy shifting, I think it's easy to get really swept up in, in, in different directions. And I think forgetting, like, what are we working on? What are the goals of the community? You know, I think the community has its own goals and those don't change just because there's a pandemic. It just changes how and, and when. And I think sometimes we forget who we are and we can hide behind a screen and say a lot of things way easier than when we're in person. And I think just making sure we're staying humble to the type of character we want to continue to be in the community and how we represent our community. A lot of us are in other places and I want to be sure that Murray's represented in the best possible way. But I think as a business owner too, not being afraid to advocate for what we need as a business community. Um, I mean, that's part of what we need to be allowed to do. And I think a unified voice is considerably stronger than you know, a few places being willing to put out there. I think a lot of businesses have a lot of needs and I think you don't need to be afraid to ask. I think like whether or not the chamber is the only answer, I think there's an answer in the community. It's just a matter of figuring out where to connect that with that need. So I think it's remembering who we are, making sure we're representing ourselves and our community in the way that we want to be remembered. But I think also making sure that we're asking for the things that we need and not being afraid to advocate. If something isn't working on a state level for our community, we need to be advocating for what we need in our community and what, what those specific things are to Murray. Um, I think that's important as we go forward. Those are great thoughts. And one thing that comes to my mind too is, you know, when the pandemic started, there was a huge need for connecting um, individual, you know, things for individual needs, family needs. And I think about the Callaway Collective that started, you know, I think a lot of people felt like maybe the chain, that was sort of a chamber role, but, you know, really we're, we're, we're business focused. Mm -hmm. So I was really impressed that someone saw a need uh, and, and began something that has created a great team of people helping find um, 
resources for individuals and families needs and you know that's one way that maybe they looked around the community and said you know what I can start this and I think that that has been a huge blessing for our community um, to have someone step up in that role um, and do that so a, a shout out to Mary Scott Buck for that and all of the volunteers I know that have have been a part of that so I'm really impressed by that um, I was gonna just briefly maybe share you know We've seen a lot of successes as our chamber. You know, last year we won 2019 National Chamber of the Year. LaCosta and I were there in person. Um, got to see just, you know, how we stand out compared to other communities. Got to rub shoulders with other communities and just um, share a lot of ideas. We were gonna start a lot of fun initiatives in 2020 that we just have had to put the pause uh, button on. Our chamber has seen probably a fifth of our members leave the chamber this year just because of the pandemic and their struggles. We, 40% of our income is from events and we've had to cancel all of them due to capacity issues and, and obviously health concerns and risk for businesses and the liability uh, of going to those things. So where are we moving forward? You know, a lot of people ask, you know, in terms of businesses, you know, what is next and what in the room are we discussing it should be on the forefront of our minds from your perspective as business owners and business leaders um you know where are we going to go in 2021 and just real briefly i know that we're running short on time we will go over the hour mark so just to prepare but um you know maybe just briefly share where you feel like we're headed in 2021 uh trey i'll start with you I would say uh, was what happened in 2020. I'm not going to sit here trying to act like I know how to predict what 2021 is going to be like. It's probably going to be more challenging than 2020, <laughs> right? Because I remember every single month this year, I keep going, okay, next month is going to be better. Then about July, I stopped. And I just go, you know what, God, I will take whatever challenge you want to throw at me this month. Then I'll deal with next month. And I think it's really the same way, right? Is to know no matter what, life and business both are going to be challenging. And is to number one, to have your faith, whatever your faith is in, mice and God. So to know that you're going to get through this and to find your right support system to support you and to find the right organization that's going to support you and your organization. For us is my group of friends and women and church groups and people that supports me. So making sure I can lead our team in the most positive way I can and be as transparent as I can. Um, just try to be positive. You know, I'm sure every single day we come home and having all those, the, the struggles are pulling us down, but end of the day every single day is a new day every single year is a new year um brings its own challenge we just got to know that once we go through those challenges we are going to come out stronger every single day it's an opportunity looking for growth um crisis creates a lot of struggles but crisis also creates a lot of opportunities is how you look at it as an individual and as business or as an organization so i will say that's a great way to put it you know i wrote down some words you wrote and as the chamber's thinking through 2021 um we will look at this crisis as opportunity and how to serve businesses in other ways but two words that stood out to me that from what you said are hope and support and the chamber is going to be there to support our businesses in, in the biggest capacity that we can um, you know, as we adjust to our changes as well. And then we also want to provide hope to the business community um, and, and advocate, you know, for our businesses on a state level, but that there is hope and that we want to be a part of uh, the solution and support team for our businesses. And I'll, I'll throw it to Jeanette really quick. And uh, what do you think? What is 2021 gonna, gonna bring? A new year. <laughs> uh, I mean, 
I, I like to tell everybody if I had the crystal ball and could predict everything, I'd be the most popular human in the world. And I tell them that in real estate too. If I could tell them what their house is going to sell for exactly and when and how long, I'd be number one in the world. Um, if 2020 taught me anything, it's that I don't know anything. Um, I can set and I can plan and I can tell you a ton of stuff. Uh, I'm grateful to wake up every day. Um, I have a circle of friends that are my Barnabases and they lift me up and they push me forward every day. And I think that you find, whether it's at work, whether it's at your church, whether it's at home, in your family, find your circle, find your tribe that even on your worst day can look you in the face and say, you screwed up, but it's okay. You'll fix it. You'll move on because we're not going to get everything right. We're not going to get everything perfect. Um, that's what I tell everybody. We're going to make mistakes. If we're perfect all the time, then whew, we, we're fooling somebody. Um, but I think that you take those experiences that you think are going to be really, really awesome and they don't make it. And you go back and you reevaluate and you say, how can we change it to make it better? Um, Michelle will tell you, we have a leadership class that may be the five year class They're on the five year program. And that's just because we couldn't finish out. Um, and I, I'm a firm believer in that leadership Murray program, but we will get them finished. Uh, I laugh and tell them that they're going to be in it longer than anybody else, but they're going to be the best and most seasoned group of people. And I know that they want to get back together as well. Uh, we had a new initiative that we were going to do this year with educators uh, starting this summer, and it was going to be lift. Well, guess what? We didn't get to launch, but are we going to give up on it? No, we have more time to actually plan. And you know what? We probably have some new things that they can add to that program because they have some new ways of teaching and doing and actually seeing what we need essentially going forward uh, in the community. And we're still excited about that program. Just because we didn't get to do it doesn't mean that we're just like, oh, it's not going to happen. Um, I, I can't sit here and tell you what 2021 is going to bring. Um, just like the rest of them, you know, we thought June or July we were going to be past this. And here we are coming to the holiday season. And holidays even look different for families this year and for retailers and for companies. And, you know, everybody used to go, oh, I got another holiday party or oh, I got another, you know, event that we have to go to. How many of you are struggling with that problem now this year? <laughs> Not so much. And so it's those things that we thought were such a struggle to go to and everything that we actually yearn for and that we want. And I think that if we've learned anything, even the people who thought that they were the extroverts that did not need togetherness, everybody needs some kind of togetherness. It may not be as much as everybody else. I'm a social butterfly. I love being around people. Um, but Michelle, the only thing I know to tell you for 2021 is we're going to get up and we're going to do the best we can every day. And every day may not be perfect. We may not hit our goals that we thought we were going to do, but we're going to do the best we can. And sometimes people don't think that our best is good enough, but look for your circle that will support you and keep pushing forward. Uh, Katrina and I had a nice long talk one day. Uh, I hope she doesn't mind me bringing this up, but we all struggle and you know, she sent out a text and so I immediately picked up the phone and by the time that we were done talking, we were both laughing and you go on, but you find those people that encourage you. Um, Cause we're not going to get everything right all the time. And I think one of the biggest things that I've learned is it's okay to let other people help you. I think if that's anything that I can take away is it's okay to let other people help you. Um, and I think all of them on this call know there's always hope. Um, a good friend of mine sent me that video this year that had Alex Trebek giving his speech after he had went into remission. And at the end of it, he said, remember that there's always hope. And so I will carry that on from what Trey said in her thoughts and what you said that you picked out of hers is hope. There's always hope. So that's all I've got for you. Uh, we're going to do the best that we can as a chamber. Hang with us. We're all in uncharted territory but we're going to do the best we can. Uh, for anybody listening, we have strategic planning coming up and we're as a board really going to work hard and we are open to suggestions, but 
know that we are there to support. Um, and we're trying to, our best to get it right, but this is just uncharted territory that we're in right now. So. Michelle, can I add something? Absolutely. I think 2021 looks like relationships, right? So basically, you know, the chamber has in the past, and I think a lot of our businesses, we're always doing big picture stuff. And I think, you know, we've been kind of marginalized or pushed aside or had to meet in smaller groups. But I think actually the advantage of that and what I think what will be the focus probably in 2021 is is really strengthening the foundations of, I would help our business community. So I think from business to business and as our business community grows stronger, or gets to know each other better um, as different industries. I think we're all aware of people, but really connecting as businesses um, through the chamber and with the chamber. Um, this is an awesome time to build a relationship locally so that as things do open up, and I believe they will open up, I'm never going to quit believing that we're going to get back to a, a sense of, of that. Um, but I think as they do, then we're going to have such a united front that we actually then get to leap back into, I think, big picture and state levels of things in, in a bigger way. So to me, 2021 sounds like relationship building, um, strengthening our, our local community and, and our understanding of our needs of our community so that when we do get those openings and those opportunities, we're going to be ready for action. And I think that's the big piece is looking at the action steps of this coming year. Um, and I don't know if you noticed, Michelle, there's some live questions. Are we answering those? Yeah, I was going to save that to the end. Um, yes. Okay. I was going to let you and LaCoste yeah. And then I think we'll finish out on <clears throat> the questions that we have um, today. Yes. LaCosta, any thoughts? Yeah, I'll just add really quickly. I think for moving forward in 2021, we need to look at what we did well in 2020. And that starts with maybe even just small things. Maybe not every meeting needs to be a meeting about a meeting in person. Okay. Maybe a meeting, maybe a meeting looks like this. I know we all enjoy each other and we want to be around each other, but maybe things look a little bit different. So if we've used our time wisely and we've been able to adapt in different situations on Zoom or um, you know, on phone calls or, or whatever, or drive through to, to sign your deed or <laughs> buy your house, maybe things look a little bit different. So I think if 2020 has taught us anything, moving forward to 2021, as a very territorial person, I will say that it has taught me to adapt. It's taught me to stop and to listen to concerns that other people have, even in my own home. And to give that 40 second hug that we talked about, Jeanette. Um, but just to really, to really. Come down in time. Right. Is it 40 <laughs> seconds? But just to, just to stop and to um, sort of adapt to things that just because you've done something the same way this whole time, it doesn't mean that it's right or it's the thing to do. There is room for change and you can adapt to that change. So moving forward. Just adapt to, to the changing surroundings and, and um, be willing to work with people on, on their schedules and, and not everything has to be right now, right here. You can adapt to it. Well, that's the perfect segue into us closing out this time. Um, one of my uh, quotes that I've sort of gone back to several times through this pandemic is by Dave Hollis. And I think early on we shared it um, I think in a, a maybe a mental health um, webinar with Katrina's team, um, but the quote mentioned was in the rush to return to normal, let's use this time to consider which parts of normal are worth rushing back to. And I think that goes in hand in hand with the question we've been asked is we've had a time in the chamber, in our businesses to pause and, and reevaluate um, our best practices and some of those are things that we don't need to do anymore and maybe we can adapt and change um, and evolve into something else and I think that's honestly where we're at at the chamber is how can we adapt how can we change and be supportive now more than ever and so as we close out if you all just kind of want to unmute yourself instead of just one at a time maybe just kind of discuss what are the things you feel like we won't rush back to what are some changes that um that have been positive changes that now we're going to implement into our business and, and the question says 
uh, what of the changes that we've made due to COVID, if anything, do you believe will be permanent change? And what, or what do you hope will be permanent change um, from this pandemic? So I open it up, just maybe we can all just one at a time popcorn, share what you think. I think accessibility and flexibility um, I hope those, I think those are going to stay. I think the ability to access your business in multiple ways, I hope that doesn't go away. I don't think it will. I think a lot of us are finding lots of formats and that's going to serve us going forward, even if the majority still prefer one way. I think anytime you have multiple opportunities for access, um, for services, for product, for people, for connection, that's always going to be important. And I would say mobility as well with that. Just the ability, I mean, a lot of people are working from home and doing well, um, but also, I mean, the ability to work in different venues and work around with different people. So I think flexibility, mobility, accessibility, I don't think those things are going to go back. I think they're actually just going to keep improving. I agree with Katrina on that. I think people are realizing, hey, I didn't know I could do that. Hey, I didn't, I didn't realize I could be so successful or that I'm, I'm so much, I'm less stressed by, you know, working from home. I have found that in working from home, I tend to work later. You know, I'm, I'm usually out of there at 3 30, 4 o'clock at home. I'm still checking email at 6, 6 30, whatever, because I can. So I think people will, people are finding, Hey, I didn't, I didn't really realize that, you know, I could, I could still be on and, and, um, still be productive or, or be productive in a different way. So I think people are finding out things about themselves and that comes with what Katrina said, flexibility and, and that sort of thing. I agree. I feel like it's a lot of waste about going back to all the things that we talked about earlier is finding business and individuals and families are finding in innovative ways to do things. No matter is your business or the platforms, or how we are with our teams, um, working with the flexibility of family, because our organization definitely had a big discussion about that. Like what's workable, what's not workable, is to figure it out continuously to push for that innovative ways to serve our team, serve our customers, serve our community. Like, I think that's a big change that we didn't have before it's probably on the stay. I hope innovation and creativity don't go away personally. Same. I think yeah. the more that we dream, the more that teams were pushed, the better the service and product actually becomes. I think that's actually the great thing is I think we are pushed to provide better service um, during that time. Probably the same for you, LaCosta, for you, Jeanette. Trey, you came up with a whole new product line. So, I mean, I hope that doesn't go away. I think all of us benefit when we're pushed to create and innovate so I hope that stays for a long time and I don't think it's just in business I think we're finding different ways to engage with our families as well you know we've had we had to get creative in the summer with there was there was no 4-H camp there was no church camp you know we had to get creative with really cool things to do in our neighborhoods and um you know just here at home so the my my creative creativity juices were flowing with, hey, what are we going to do today? Let's, let's get this done, you know, whether it was exercising or going on a bike ride or whatever, um, just always finding things to do with family. People have found that sense of, hey, these, these, these people I live with are actually pretty cool. You know, maybe they hadn't really taken time um, to spend with their families. And now, you know, they've found out new things about each other and different ways to connect. Now they value those 45 second group hugs that you start out with. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I think one of the things that hopefully we've learned is just because you have a full calendar uh, that has a bunch of stuff by each time on it, doesn't mean that you have a productive calendar. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully it's made us look at how we're gonna schedule ourselves from here on out. I know that you don't realize sometimes how tired you are until you actually have a break. And I think that a lot of us had a break and they were like, oh, my body needs to like rest and recoup. Mm -hmm. But I would hope that we're just not going back to, and Katrina, I'm with you. I think that we will get to a time before we're back to where we were meeting and doing and hopefully sooner than later. I think everybody knows that I'm aware of that, but I hope that we're not just opening our scheduling books just to fill things uh, like we once did. I hope that we're actually being very methodical and strategic about what we do. Uh, when we start putting those appointments in again. 
<laughs> we are going to open. <laughs> I want the business community to feel you. We are going to open. And I think businesses are teetering on those lines of how to keep employees safe, how to keep families safe. But I'm all about businesses thriving. So we're going to continue to advocate for that for business as well. And I think you've made some great points here as we're closing out and some words that we can definitely take into our strategic planning and how businesses have had learned to adapt. You know, I know nobody may be on this call, but in some of the others, there are companies who have no employees in their office. And so if they're allowed to have that mobility and are just as productive, I could see businesses moving out of that brick and mortar type setting and, and moving more towards uh, shared spaces, creative spaces where businesses can rent uh, that space. Um, you know, I see a lot of communities doing that. So there's just so many creative things that businesses are looking at doing. Uh, we've launched the remote work jobs in partnership with TVA and economic development to diversify even jobs here in our community for people who want to stay and live here, but maybe they're, they're not able to. Uh, work right now or don't want to move. Um, so we are looking at all of those things and, and, you know, and helping businesses get through those things together. You know, as business leaders come together and share their ideas, we can really help each other move forward. And the chamber wants to help businesses be more accessible, be more flexible. If there's, um, if you're looking into going online and being sort of a web bank, company we want to help you think through that and connect you with another business that is going through the same thing uh, and I think I could say probably all of us on this are uh, extroverts or uh, value people and events <laughs> getting dressed up and getting out and just being uh, out there and you know I, I look forward to those days again when uh, the chamber can host those things because we love seeing people and connecting people um, and you know I know that that will come eventually and uh, we hope to do that really soon but I really appreciate all of you today on this uh, on this webinar or call whatever you want to call it we've had to adapt and uh, you know the good thing about these, we can record them and then share them later for people to catch up. I had a lot of people say, I can't be there, but I want to watch it. Um, and so virtual has created that sort of platform for us as well. But um, as we close out, any other thoughts or any last words um, as we uh, dismiss today? Michelle, do you want to uh, promote our open house stuff real quick to everybody listening? I mean, that's what's coming up. Pretty excited about it. Absolutely. This time of the year is always the time when the chamber is so excited to promote shop local. Um, and we are excited to promote holiday open house. You've hopefully seen some ads and uh, billboards with our holiday open house. We want you to shop local um, and get your presence um, and support our stores versus online. Um, so November 13th through the 15th, please shop with our local retailers. There's going to be a lot of sales. Most of the businesses even wrap the presents for you. So they are making it really easy for you to shop. And we are launching our Love Local Shared Brand Initiative on November 12th. You're going to see more details about that. But we are going to have a fun kickoff day where we partnered with Cherie to offer a movie night for ladies. We're all ready to get out of the house. Obviously, we'll follow all of the guidelines that Cherie has in place but look for that to register um, we've we think we've chosen the movie um, so we're really excited Haley has worked her booty off uh, to prepare for this and connect with our local retailers so we're really excited to launch that so please check your emails in the coming coming weeks and Facebook um, but we are um, excited to promote a holiday open house this year and really want our community to remember to love local Put your money where your heart is and support our local friends and neighbors who have businesses here in our community. So with that, I'm going to close it out unless there's any other thoughts. Thank you so much for today. Uh, well, thank you all. We really appreciate it and uh, look forward to the getting together as a board and planning our future. So um, you guys have a wonderful day. <laughs>